Hi, my name is Tom Waters, and we're going to be going up to exploring the planets to the Mercury unit. So, if you follow me up the escalators, uh, we'll we'll amble over that way. Yep. What I'm going to do is just sort of bring you up to date on what's going on with the Messenger mission, which is on its way to Mercury. And I have a yeah, unfortunately my pointer won't work there, but this is the launch of uh, uh, Messenger which happened in uh, August of 2004. It seems uh, like a long time ago. Uh, we have been uh, in flight now for six years, and we have made actually, it's too bad the, the uh, graphic will come up here in a minute. We've actually made a whole variety of flybys to get to where we're going. Um, Three of those flybys have been of Mercury, which has been incredibly helpful. I'm going to just talk a little bit about the instrument, and then we'll come back to that. The spacecraft itself, uh, even though it is a Discovery class spacecraft, and this is a one to five scale model of the spacecraft, uh, it's a small spacecraft, but it has lots of instruments, as you can see. There's almost too many instruments to get onto that diagram. Many of those instruments are located right here in this adapter ring area, uh, including the instrument that I'm most directly associated with on Messenger, which is the Messenger dual imaging system, which is actually two cameras, a narrow angle camera and a wide angle camera. Um, and again, we have a variety of other instruments which I wish I had time to, to talk about. If you have questions about them, uh, feel free to, to ask me um, after, the, after the presentation's over. So just to start off, Mercury, um, and this is just by way of a little bit of background, Mercury had really only one other planetary mission until Messenger, and that was Mariner 10. And Mariner 10 flew in the middle 70s, so it's been over 30 years uh, since we actually had a second mission to Mercury. And this is a coverage map of Mercury, which just shows how much of the planet Mariner 10 actually imaged. It was actually less than 50% that we saw. Even though Mariner 10 made three flybys, it saw the same hemisphere on each of those flybys. So we got some fantastic data, and some of that is shown in, in these static panels down here below this display that you can take a look at. Um, but yeah, and the main point is over half of the planet remain unimaged until Messenger. And as I said, we had Messenger had a series of flybys, two by uh, or one by the Earth, two by Venus, and then fortunately three flybys of Mercury, which provided us with an amazing amount of uh, imaging and a really uh, good portion of the planet has now been imaged. In fact, if you add up the area Mariner 10 imaged, which is again that part of the hemisphere that's outlined in green, and you look at the fl first or three flybys, we have now imaged over 90% of the surface of Mercury. Uh, you can see that there are gaps, though. And the, even though that sounds like, well, well, gee, okay, you've imaged 90% of the surface of the planet, so mission done. Well, no. The whole idea is for Messenger to go into Mercury orbit. And we are approaching that uh, in March of next year. In fact, March 18 is the big date um, where we will actually go into orbit around the planet, and it will be the first spacecraft to ever orbit Mercury. And just again, something to point out about the spacecraft, because I just love to point this out, is this thing right here. This thing that looks like a shield is actually what it is. It's a shield. It's actually a heat shield. Uh, it is a sun shade, and it is designed to keep that spacecraft cool, because we're going to be operating closer to the sun than any spacecraft has ever operated. And that shield has to be pointed at the sun all the time. When we're in orbit, it will never, ever vary from that uh, position or 
pointing because if it does, the spacecraft will overheat, the electronics will be permanently damaged, and end of mission. Um, that's actually the, the material that you actually see here is called Nextel. It's a ceramic cloth, um, and it's actually the same material that's on the sunshade. So I'm not going to talk about much about what we've accomplished in these first three flybys, but it, we have seen, again, a terrific amount of the planet and made some terrific discoveries, which I could spend hours talking to you about. What I'm going to focus on is, the, again, the orbital phase coming up here in March. And what we're going to do is, well, again, let me back up and say why is it important that we're going into orbit? Because we had three flybys. We've imaged like 90% of the planet. But that's far from having mission over because those flybys, as important as they were um, and as much coverage as we got, were not optimal in many ways because of lighting geometry. And I'm going to back up here. Whoop, I'm jumping ahead. Let me back up. You can see in this picture, uh, the coverage map, especially of the Mariner, I'm sorry, the uh, messenger areas, that there's different qualities in the images. Some of the imaging or mosaics um, are actually very well lit. You can see shadows. So you can see actual surface features very well. Other areas are very un optimally lit to see surface features. In other words, the sun was very high, and so that is not the best geometry uh, to get lots of surface morphology, lots of surface details. Um, it's great for other things, but not for mapping actual morphologic features on the surface. So in orbit, we will have the optimum conditions to image the entire surface of Mercury. And one thing I want to point out here again is just the orbit. Um, it's very elliptical, as you can see. The, the uh, pericenter is going to be uh, at about 200 kilometers located in the northern hemisphere. And the, and the uh, farthest point um, is going to be uh, over 1,500 kilometers away. Now, in many ways, that's not ideal. Um, most of the time, you like to go into a circular orbit. You have a circular orbit. You can then map the entire surface at a consistent resolution with your imaging. All your instruments have uh, optimum um, distance to operate and collect data. We can't do that um, at Mercury. And the primary reason why is the same reason we have that sunshade, except this problem is coming from Mercury itself. Mercury is very hot. And if we tried to go into a circular orbit, even though we have that sunshade constantly pointed at the sun, that's, the spacecraft will overheat. And we'll have the same problem. In fact, you know, initially, a couple of things uh, had to be done when uh, simulations were actually done uh, to account for Mercury's thermal contribution to the spacecraft. Things had to be redesigned. The, uh, the um, uh, solar panels were actually redesigned because the initial panels actually delaminated under the conditions <laughs> that we were going to be operating at Mercury. So what happens here is we're going to be approaching the northern hemisphere. We're going to get very high resolution imaging. Uh, we'll be using the wide angle camera, which is the lower resolution uh, camera of the two. It takes a wider area, but lower resolution in the northern hemisphere, and we'll be using in the southern hemisphere the, the narrow angle camera, which is basically a telescope, which gives us our highest resolution images. Um, and again, during that orbit, what will happen is the spacecraft will heat up, and then it will cool down, and heat up and cool down. Um, so we can keep the spacecraft happy, the electronics happy, and um, the mission can complete its, uh, its uh, uh, projected uh, lifetime. What I want to show you here is what we're shooting for in the orbital phase of the mission, which is to cover 100% of the planet, even though you can see there are a couple little gaps in there, but we'll, we'll probably fill those in. But you can see that nearly 100% of the planet is imaged. And this bar over here is just showing you sort of the range and resolution. And what really uh, to, to notice in this is that our optimum resolution is going to be somewhere around 250 meters per pixel. That's basically our target, is to get 
a global map, which is better than 250 meters per pixel globally. Again, where that's going to be a problem and a challenge will be down in the southern hemisphere where we are going to be furthest from the planet. And even with the narrow angle camera, we're not going to be able to cover the entire planet uh, or the entire southern hemisphere at that resolution that we want. But we're going to get pretty close. So this just shows you that variation in resolution that we're going to be able to get using both cameras. Something else we're going to be going after is not just a single image map of the uh, entire surface of Mercury. We're going to be doing or going after stereo coverage. That is taking another complete set of images from a different viewing angle that we can actually use then to derive stereo topography or stereo derived topography. Um, and you can see we're going to get much of the planet um, in, in the first solar day, which is again sort of our first year of, of operations. We're going to have some gaps, but we're again, we're hoping we can fill those gaps in. If we can't do it in the first year of operation, we're hopefully with the spacecraft staying healthy and an extended mission, we will be able to get all those areas filled in as well. Why it's important that we're getting stereo is that we're trying to also create the first global topographic map of Mercury. Um, and one of the limitations that our orbit is giving us here, and I'm just going to show you this one, this is a, a basically a coverage map that will be, uh, that is projected for the laser altimeter. One of the instruments up here, it's actually, this is one that has the four cones up in the adapter ring, is a laser altimeter. So it's going to fire a laser to the surface. It will reflect off the surface, be received by those uh, cones, and then we basically very accurately determine the distance from the spacecraft to the surface, and then from that we can determine the topography very, very accurately. The trouble is, again, we're in this very elliptical orbit, so only the northern hemisphere of the planet except for some areas going into maybe as far down as 20 degrees south, but very spotty, co spotty coverage because the laser signal, the noise just gets so low when you get to a certain altitude that it just can't receive that laser pulse. So the good news is we're going to have a terrific laser altimetry based topographic map of the northern hemisphere of the planet. The bad news is we're not going to have that for the southern hemisphere. So to give us a total global map of the topography of Mercury, we're going to need that stereo along with this laser altimetry. Wow. Um, finally, I just want to say that, that we're also, because we have this narrow angle camera, which is basically a telescope, we're going to be doing targeted imaging. And we're putting together a, t a database of targets that are based on what we know now from the first three flybys, targets that are of interest, targets that were a little bit mysterious, and that we're trying to image at the highest resolution possible. And with that, again, in the northern hemisphere, where we will be closest to the planet, we will actually be able to get images that are 8 to 30 meters per pixel of the planet, which will be by far the highest resolution images that have ever been obtained uh, for the surface of Mercury. And with that, I'm going to stop. Thank you for listening to this edition of Ask an Expert. A companion question and answer session for this lecture may also be available. For a schedule of upcoming Ask an Expert lectures at the museum, please visit www.nasm.si.edu.